I was having lunch with a friend who works in a professional services firm, one of the big accounting firms, and he was bemoaning to me how he was up for a really plum new leadership job, but he was worried that the other candidate was way more political than he was, and he didn't have much of a shot against her. Hi, I'm Dr. Leanne Davey. Have you ever found yourself in this position feeling like you do not have the political wherewithal to be able to maneuver your way into those plum positions? Well, I'm gonna share with you some different ways to think about politics in the organization and how those office politics can actually be something, a skill that you can get better at. Okay, let's start with just the very idea of how we think about and talk about office politics, because the first step is to change the language you use so that you can change how you think about and how you approach these situations where you need to be a little bit more savvy. When I was talking with my friend, the language he was using to describe this other candidate made it sound like office politics was the most insidious, evil thing you could ever imagine. I asked him to, to think about it differently. What if it's just what we call office politics is being better at stakeholder management, being more clear about your personal brand and your value proposition to the organization. None of those things have such a negative connotation and that's really what office politics is about. So changing the language so that you say, it's not unethical, slimy, schmarmy people who participate in office politics, but people who want to add value and want to be recognized for adding that value. So changing that mindset is the first first place to start. The second thing I want to say is it is so important to be true to yourself. I am not recommending at any point that you think of this as being inauthentic or pretending to be something that you're not. Staying true to the core of who you are and what you believe matters a lot. And I know I once was scored in the fourth percentile on political savvy because I'm so uh, principled about staying true to who I am. So I get it. But what you can do is step three. So while you're being true to yourself, you can focus on how can I add value for the organization or for my department or my team or, or whatever, for my customer ultimately. So focusing on how to add value is a great way of getting away from thinking about office politics as something unhelpful or unhealthy and to getting to understanding that really what office politics are about is what's the currency of the organization and how much of it do you have? Very much like in a governmental political race where we understand what are the hot issues, what are the most important things going on in any given election, and, and who seems to have that. So the currency in your organization, it could be many, many different things. It could be profitability, that certainly is the currency in many, but there are other organizations where profitability is irrelevant. It's all about growth. Are you bringing on new users? And <laughs> That's more important. In other places, it's about, do you have that currency of having very strong relationships with either key customers or a regulator or other stakeholders. So there are different currencies and what you're trying to figure out is what's the most valuable currency for the role I'm trying to get and how do I focus as much of my attention and energy and efforts as possible on delivering on that currency. That's what's going to get you noticed. That's what's going to get you points in the bank. Four, I want you to now think about the exact same question about what is value and what has currency, but I want you to think about it from the hiring manager's perspective. It may be a little bit different or nuanced. You think about the politics that you're facing and the pressures you're under in trying to get this new role, but do you spend enough time thinking about what is the politics and the pressure of the person who's hiring into this role? I bet those pressures are, are even stronger, more profound than what you're facing. So taking some time to empathize and think about, hmm, how are they being evaluated? What's important for them? Where do they want to be able to put check marks on the scorecard to feel like this person has the things that are necessary to succeed in this role? Because ultimately that's about, do they have what I need them to have so that there will be less stress on me? They'll deliver the things that I've committed to and I'm being held accountable for. That's really what they're measuring and, and trying to chalk up each candidate in that sense. The fifth thing is the other half of the equation for the hiring manager. So, so far we've talked all about adding value, more and more and more of the positive. 
But who they select into a position is not just about uh, what do you bring and what's the value you can contribute. And this is maybe why we often think of politics as, you know, the best person doesn't always get the job. And in some ways that's true because sometimes it's not the person with the most positives, the most assets in that column. Sometimes what they do is they pick the person with the fewest liabilities. So in addition to thinking about what value you can bring, you have to think about how does your candidacy add risks? Are there reasons why you're untested? Are there parts of the role that you've never done? And so it, it's a big question mark as to whether you'll be successful. Are there things in your track record that might have the hiring manager a little nervous? Like, ooh, there's been some friction between her and IT in the past, and this role has a lot of interface with IT. Might be risky. If it works, it could be great but there are a lot of reasons to worry and doubt and there are risks of her candidacy. So yes, we're definitely thinking about all of your positives, but I think one of the reasons that sometimes we're surprised by who gets a job is that a lot of hiring managers are more motivated by fear, more motivated by putting in the lowest risk candidate as opposed to putting in the highest possibility candidate. Okay, one final thing, the, the um, sixth criteria we want to talk about is just make sure through the entire process that you are playing nicely with others. So the, the actual horse race time where you're trying to you know, go through the interviews, show yourself as the great candidate that you know you are, well, how you interact with the other candidates, how you interact with the hiring manager, just how you show up through that process is going to say a lot about who you are and, and how you're gonna tackle the role. So don't get those sharp elbows up, don't be overstating or misrepresenting your contributions, and certainly don't be throwing anybody else under the bus. All of that is not only going to affect your candidacy for this role, but it's going to form your reputation forevermore in the organization. So make sure that what you're demonstrating is even through a tough process, even where it feels competitive and there's a lot of stress and pressure, show that in those rough situations, you take the high road. That's going to be really good for your career overall. So as I'm talking about this, I hope you're realizing that what feels like and gets labeled as organizational politics is often sour grapes from people who aren't as good at adding value, who aren't as good at um, influencing stakeholders, who aren't as good at creating a compelling story of what they contribute. It's not uh, that somehow they're schmarmy or unethical or shrewd. So think about organizational politics and office politics as just part of what it takes to be successful. You need to be more aware of the business environment and what that means and what the currencies are. You need to be more aware of who are all the players, not just the hiring manager, but people who influence them, people they need to consider in selecting the right person for the role. And don't just think about the upside. Think about what are the risks and how do you do things and answer questions in a way and have experiences that start to, to cross those risks off so that the person can feel more confident about putting you in the role. And what's interesting about all of this is this is not just office politics about getting a job. These are actually the skills that are gonna make you more successful when you get the job. So for that reason, I find a lot of these things are really good indicators of who deserves to get a new position. All right, that's it for me. I'm Dr. Leanne Davey, here to help you get the team, or in this case, the job, that you deserve. Thanks so much for tuning in. And check out my other videos for how-tos on dealing with some of the situations that come up when we're trying to make teamwork work.